On this episode of Tiger TV, we talk about passion and we talk about the controllables. Hi everybody, welcome back to another edition of Tiger TV. I am your host, Spiker Helms. I am here at SIU Carbondale with head coach, Ken Henderson. Coach, welcome to the show. Thanks, Spiker. Appreciate uh, you having us. Um, coach Henderson, he played at Missouri Southern, then was a coach at Missouri Southern, went to Kansas State, then Oral Roberts, and then now he is here at SIU Carbondale. And what a, what a run has it been so far? It's been good. It's been a long time. Yeah. <laughs> home now. Now is there now is there anything you like to add in on 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 the history or anything like that? No, I'm just uh, you know it's, I love SIU. Uh, I love being here and. Uh, I stayed for, you know, this is my 26th year, 27th spring, actually, of being here, and uh, I was fortunate to work with great people and uh, working with Coach Cal all those years and staying with him, and uh, so I, I've been very blessed and fortunate and uh, uh, to get the opportunity to go to K-State when I was 23 years old, and uh, we've talked about that story a little bit, but uh, my junior college coach got the head coaching yep. job, and uh, uh, Fortunately, uh, took me along, I guess, and then uh, two other assistants quit before the first spring, and so I slide into the being, you know, 23 years old, I'm the only assistant, and so I, I've been blessed. I've been blessed yep. and uh, fortunate to, to stay in the business this long and be in the places I've been. Well, let's head into it. I know these uh, people want to hear, <laughs> hear, hear what your answers are for these questions. Now, when you're out recruiting, what do you look for in a player? Mentally, physically, um, body language, what, what, do you, what is it you look for? Well, it's an interesting question. First and foremost, I look for talent. Yeah, uh, if you don't have talent, it doesn't matter. I kind of relate it to this, you know. Uh, maybe if you're dating someone, you want to, you don't want to get to know them, and, you, and to get along with them, you got to have a great personality. But if you're not attracted to them in the beginning, with, it doesn't <laughs> yeah. matter what the personality is. Yeah. And so, uh, so there has to be talent, and uh, you have to be, uh, you have to like what you see. But but it goes way beyond that for us. And we've tried to rebuild this program in the last few years, and uh, it's it's been a process. And we've tried to do it with blue collar kids, tough, hard nosed kids. You're going to hear me talk about that quite a bit. And so. Uh, for me, it's the intangibles. Uh, how hard does he play? Uh, how does he approach the game? How does he interact with his teammates? How does he handle adversity? And uh, it starts with me: uh, is how do you get on and off the field? Mm -hmm. Th that's huge for me. And uh, we're going to sign a kid in November, a shortstop, and he was he was a really nice player, but. The thing I remember most about him, and, and this is in a tournament in, in July in Tennessee, it's hot, uh, it's about 104 degrees on the field, and the guy was the first one on and the first one off the field every half inning, and uh, I remember that, and uh, those kind of things stick out with me. You know, what do you do when you take a terrible swing? You know, you, you, I tell people, you, you may hit a four hopper back of the pitcher, he's still got to feel that he's got to throw it and somebody else has got to catch it, you better work in the assumption they're going to mess one of those up. So it's playing hard. It's, uh, again, as a pitcher, how do you handle adversity? And uh, what do you do when an umpire uh, doesn't give you that two-strike call with a runner third? Give us an and uh, uh, we'd all like to go crazy, but yeah. as a pitcher, you got to keep your composure. And so those are the things, the intangibles that we look for. And, and to be honest with you, Spiker, I've walked away from some kids I really liked physically yeah. uh, just because I didn't like the way they played. Uh, we're not much into prima donnas around here, and if a guy can't bust his rear end and play hard, then uh, he's probably not going to get Straight blue us. collar. Uh, we try to be. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's Southern Illinois. I'm yeah. a blue collar guy. I grew up in a small town in Oklahoma, and uh, uh, those are the kind of kids I want to surround myself with. And, and you uh, got to be blue collar in the MVC. Absolutely. Yeah, it'll eat you up. You're right. It'll eat you up and spit you back Because out. there's a lot of those, <laughs> no. and they're, they're hard to find, but the people in this league find them somehow. Oh, wow. And uh, absolutely, it is a, it, it's, it's a challenge every weekend. And uh, uh, the people we play against, I have so much respect for for them and their programs and the way they play the game. And I and I bring it up to our kids. I say, you know, well, look at look at how how Dallas Baptist play and look at how Missouri State's yeah. playing the game. And uh, uh, so yeah, you better find those kind of kids if you're gonna. Compete. Well, even the league, like if you look at the standings last year, it was like neck and neck. Yeah. I mean, when you had Missouri State at the bottom, and that's my alma mater. That's my alma mater, <laughs> and, I, and I'm not downplaying them right now. But they're last, and they had I'm not the, going there, yeah, they, yeah and they had they had the be, they had the leading home run guys. So it, it, you have to be a blue collar mentality in the I, mean, I tell you what, this league is, uh, it's such a great league yeah. and uh, we're all blessed to be a part of it and uh, uh, we're fortunate that, that 
everybody in the league emphasizes baseball, mm-hmm. and uh, it's important to everybody in the league, and uh, just the coaches and the facilities and the players we're able to attract, and uh, uh, you know, it's it's one of the best baseball leagues in the country, and certainly the best in this part of the country. Oh yeah, and right. uh, but it's fun. It's a challenge every weekend. There there are no off weekends. There's no uh, nobody down at the bottom. You say that's our weekend to take off, and uh, uh, you you got to become ready to play every weekend. Now, now what do you look for academically in a, in a student athlete? Well. I appreciate you asking me that question because, I, and I tell people, you, I'm as academically minded as any coach you will find. Mm-hmm. That is priority number one. Um, what my my thinking, Spiker, is if you don't take care of business academically, if you take shortcuts or it's not important to you, uh, you'll eventually do the same thing out on the field for me. Uh, I want our kids to uh, to be the very best they can be in everything they do, and uh, and it certainly starts with academics. And uh, what I want a kid to do academically is again be the very best he can be. If you work your rear end off and you're a 2425 student, I'm every bit as proud of that kid as I am a 4.0 student who, who some kids' school is just easy for them. They're just, uh, they're just gifted that mm-hmm. way. But uh, I want our kids to, to be the very best they can be. And there are some red flags when you're recruiting. I mean, if I have a kid who's a, who's a really high ACT, uh, SAT kid who has a very poor GPA, that kid probably doesn't work very hard. Yeah. On the other hand, that GPA is really important to me. you got a kid who who doesn't test well, but but he's busting his butt in the classroom and he's making good grades and his GPA is reflective of that. Uh, those are the kids we want in our program. And I, I tell every kid I sit down with, if academics aren't important to you, if you have no interest in getting a degree, don't come to SIU. We yeah. won't get along. We'll yeah. butt heads. And uh, uh, our kids know that. And we've changed the culture academically in this program in the last five years. Five times since the fall of 2010, we have set or broken GPA records in this baseball wow. program. And I'm extremely <laughs> proud of that. And uh, uh, and that and that's hard to do because when you hit spring, without a you doubt. might be in class maybe two days. It, it, it's be. a grind. It's yeah. a struggle. And uh, you know, I, I'm proud of the fact we've had over a 3.0 team GPA both of the last springs. That's hard to do in baseball, mm-hmm. and uh, we've done that. And uh, our fall GPA is uh, the last uh, two years has been somewhere around uh, two, three, three, uh, yeah. three, three, one, and uh, um, so that's that's high. And uh, we had 32 kids in the program last year. 25 of them had a cumulative yeah. GPA of 3.0 or higher, and uh, that that means a lot to me. And uh, uh, and it's got to be important. Yeah. It's got to be important to the kids. Mm-hmm. And if it's not, again, uh, this isn't the place for them. And uh, uh, I'm extremely proud of that, that culture we have academically. Now, explain a typical day for one of your athletes. Well, first of all, there's nothing typical about it. <laughs> a uh, day in the life of an athlete. And, yeah. uh, it's a grind. You know it, Spiker. Yeah. And uh, it, different times of the year are different. Um, the fall, uh, right now, we're in full team. Uh, that's that's a grind. And uh, our kids, three days a week, we're getting up in the morning lift. And I think a lot of programs do that. Just uh, it's when we can get in the weight room. Um, then they go to class, and uh, then they're at practice. And uh, we do practice a little different. We still, throughout the year, we'll hit in shifts. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we get, uh, you know, they're out there the same amount of time, but more fewer guys at a time, so we get more swings. And so, um, you know, they're here for, for at least three hours every day. Uh, then they got a study table. Uh, all our kids have study table after that. And, uh, you know, the other thing is you don't just walk in, practice for three hours and leave. You're, mm-hmm. you're here and uh, there's other parts of it and there's video. And so it, it's a grind. It's it's a full-time job and uh, being a full-time student. And uh, it's a challenge, obviously, when you get into spring. Uh, I, I tell you, you, you try to prepare kids for it. You just absolutely cannot you do it. You just have to go. you got to live it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you yeah, yeah, you're, it. You're, you're in the sharks. Oh, without a doubt. And just, uh, just kind of, you're right, just throw them in there and say, uh, yeah. but we do try to do some things to, uh, to help out. And we have study table on the road. Um, we try to stay on top of it, and uh, but it's it's a challenge, and uh, um, these kids have to be disciplined. Uh, they have to be driven. Uh, if they're not, they're they're not going to make it. Now, what's the biggest myth in college recruiting right now? Well, I, I I'm probably going to talk a little bit on this. <laughs> well, that's uh, fine. <laughs> uh, this is something. This is a myth that uh, that I don't even know if myth is the right word, but. Uh, uh, a misconception uh, that's that's evolving, uh, mm-hmm. and it's not everybody. I don't. I don't. Uh, what I'm getting ready to tell you, I, I completely disagree with. Yeah. I don't like it. I don't like where recruiting is going, college baseball. So, uh, the myth is that student athletes matter because mm-hmm. I think in too many programs with too many coaches, they don't matter. Mm-hmm. It is strictly a business. Mm-hmm. Uh, even at the lower levels, I think with some travel programs. Uh, with certainly with with showcase, it's a business. Yeah, it's become a business, and yeah. uh, uh, it's about making money. Um, certainly at the college level, uh, at this level, it is a major major business, and uh, and I understand that part of mm-hmm. it. But it's also we're dealing with people. 
Yeah. And uh, I don't want it to be a business where, where high school or 18, 19 year old kids are the commodity. And uh, so uh, I think we've, uh, uh, too many places have lost sight of the fact that we're dealing with, 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 with kids. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's not just a business. And when I, I guess to explain on that is that, uh, uh, you know, uh, two things that really bother me. Uh, uh, signing freshmen and sophomores in high school. Yeah. Uh, I think that has to change. The NCAA has to step in and change that uh, because uh, too many of those kids are never going to show up on that campus. Yep. Uh, if they do show up on that camp, you don't know what a kid's going to be like in three years. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, and, and then the over-recruiting and running kids off. Uh, there are programs that have 45, 50 kids in the fall. Uh, you have to be at 35 by your first game. Um, that 35 should be by the first day of school. Yeah. Uh, and then you shouldn't be able to bring in and, uh, 15, 20 extra kids and can them. And so, uh, and so that's what I mean when I say it's a business is that we're just uh, uh, running kids off, mm. uh, making kids promises in the recruiting process that we're not living up to. And uh, I, I don't like that. And that bothers me. And uh, the NCAA needs to step in and make some changes and, and clean this up. And I think most coaches would welcome that. And uh, uh, because there are a lot of really good people in the business, but uh, again, so, uh, uh, Again, going back to saying what is the myth is that uh, um, too many places, the kids don't matter. Yeah. The human element is, is out of it. You're simply a number to us. You're a commodity. You're a player. Uh, and if it doesn't work out, we'll, we'll can you and bring in somebody else. And uh, that bothers me. Yeah. I mean... People are people. Relationships are everything, right? They should be. Yeah. They should be. And it uh, doesn't mean that I'm, I don't want to sit here and say that I have a great relationship with every kid yeah. we've ever had in this yeah. program and the kids haven't left. I'm not saying that. Yeah. But uh, but just uh, intentionally starting out with 45, 50 kids and knowing that, you know, in December I'm going to run off 15 of those kids. Yeah. And, or going out and getting, again, a, a freshman or a sophomore committed and saying I'm going to evaluate that kids for three years and then decide if I really want to take him. Uh, I, I just don't think you treat kids that way. And so if, if, you, make a, if you make a commitment, it's a commitment uh, yeah. on both ends and uh, I think again the NCAA needs to step in and say you know what uh, if you want to get a kid com committed as a sophomore that's yeah. fine but we're going to sign a national letter of intent right then yep. no national signing period you sign whether it be as a freshman or a sophomore both sides sign it and it's binding and if either side breaks it there's a penalty yep. in terms of loss of scholarship or loss of eligibility for a time and uh, uh, we have to make those binding and uh, uh, Again, those are two things that really bother me. Yeah. So I don't know if that's really tied to a myth, but uh, just the whole uh, idea that uh, uh, kids, uh, I, I, gotta, I think we, we're headed in a direction that I don't like where we're yeah. treating these kids as, uh, as just a product yeah. instead, of, instead of human beings. All right, so, so last question. Okay. Now, what is one parting piece of advice that you could give to youth coaches, players, or a high school coach right now? I, I would say two things. Control the things you can control which is your effort, your attitude, your demeanor. Uh, play the game uh, for the right reasons and, and play the game for the right reasons, which is enjoy the game. Yeah. Uh, don't play the game to get a scholarship. Don't play the game to get drafted. Play the game for, for the great game that it is. Yeah. Go out and enjoy it and uh, uh, you know, play it the right way. Uh, play it hard and, uh, and, again, control those things you can control, which is your effort. Uh, you know, I may go 0 for 3, uh, but, but I played my rear end off. And, uh, you know, again, I was the first one on the field for it. Those are things you can control day in and day out. And uh, uh, so just, just those two things, I think. You know what gets me jazzed up is when you see a guy like he's 0 for 3 for the day and like you're not coaching him like you, I separate myself out of it and I see I see a player on the other side and he goes 0 for 3 and he's like the first one out of the dugout just giving high fives uh, everywhere without just because he's passionate about yeah, it yeah passion for the game is a big one for me and kids that love to play and you can see it you yeah. see it you oh, just yeah. talk about it yeah. and uh, you know it's interesting I, I remember this is going back a few years I went to Chicago to see a kid play yeah. it was a playoff game in high school back when you recruited high school kids or when they were playing them our high school season to the summer, but uh, kid went 0 for 3 with three strikeouts. Absolutely loved him. Absolutely loved the kid. Did everything the way you wanted. You know, things you talk about, had passion for the game. Uh, we end up signing him. He comes in here. He, he, he has a great career for us and ends up getting drafted, playing some pro ball. And so, it, you know, it's, it's a tough game. Yeah. It's a tough game. It, hitting's hard. Uh, sometimes it doesn't go your way. Yeah. But, again, you can control how you handle that yeah. and how you approach. You know, I tell our kids, you know, no matter what happens, you know, get ready to go the next time. You're so hold on, I'll, I'll put that point. He went 0 for 3 with three strikeouts. Yes, still recruited. Absolutely. And he ended up playing pro ball. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Switch hitting second baseman and uh, uh, 
Uh, but he just, you know, we had obviously had bat speed. And, yeah. Uh, but yeah, just sometimes you have a tough day, or yeah. sometimes you tip your hat to the pitcher. And uh, uh, but again, control the things you can control. Yeah. Uh, you know, the kid didn't pout. The kid didn't mope. The kid didn't drag his bat back to the back back to the dugout. Uh, you know, he went up there. Uh, you know, every time he's going to the play, he looks like you know with ready to get after it. And uh, so, again, those are things that, that I think as coaches we notice. Yep. Well, Coach, thanks for coming on. Thank I you, appreciate Spike. it. I appreciate it, buddy. Guys, I will link everything with SIU, their schedule coming up for the 2017 season. Also, if you want to see the other episode with his assistant coach, PJ Finnegan, you can take a look at that one right there. So, guys, like us on Instagram, follow us on Twitter, or like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram and Twitter, and we will talk with you guys soon. Thanks.